Hey everyone, welcome to your universe Z, the place where we talk all about the Dragon Ball universe. Today we are going to go through Goku training in the time room for 2 years and surpassing Beerus. And if you would like to see more Dragon Ball content, please leave your like and subscribe to join our universe Z. Goku overcoming his own limits is nothing more than expected from a series as great as Dragon Ball. With the pace of the manga and the return of the anime, many fans are expecting our protagonist to evolve into something even more incredible than what we are currently seeing in the work. In today's video, let's try to see what it would be like if Goku could overcome Beerus' power through training in the time chamber. How long would it take? How does the chamber work and what would happen? What power could he awaken? Let's talk about all of that today. A hyperbolic time chamber is a mysterious dimension that exists outside of Universe 7, but can be accessed through different doors. Each chamber has a compressed nature in time, making the flow of time very different compared to the flow of time outside the chamber. When using the entrance to the hyperbolic time chamber through the Belvedere on Earth, one year inside the chamber is equivalent to one day outside. One step beyond the threshold of the training area brings the person immediately into 10 times the gravity of Earth, the same as on planet Vadira, planet Zoan, and King Kai's planet. The thickness of the air is about a quarter of that of Earth, and the temperature fluctuates the deeper you enter the training area. Variants of hyperbolic weather chambers exist in other locations and have different conditions. The Galactic Patrol entrance allows a person to spend three days inside the chamber over the course of a day. Frieza has access to a variant of the chamber that allowed him to spend 10 years training inside it. Whis can create a dimensional space within his team for similar training purposes, and the Demon Realm race can summon a simulated hyperbolic time chamber using enough energy to assemble and sustain the chamber. The hyperbolic time chamber is a separate dimension from that of Earth. There is no night or day in the room, but the surroundings remain a constant iridescent white. Its reflective floor is of indefinite area, and it is believed that the limits of the room extend to infinity in all directions. Although it seems to have a definite atmosphere, limiting its size to those who speak in the chamber have an echo in their voices similar to when a character thinks a word, rather than saying it aloud. However, there are no solid objects beyond the entrance for the sound waves to debate. The hyperbolic time chamber has an entrance at its center, located in a central building with two side wings with housing, supplies, changing rooms, and dormitories. There are two giant emerald sand hourglasses adorning the sides of the building that count one year inside the chamber. A clock in the dome of the main part of the building indicates the applicable time in the real world. The wooden doorway is a portal between Earth and the hyperbolic time chamber and is the only way to travel to the pocket dimension without punching holes in the dimensional walls. The hyperbolic time chamber is a place where you can train and get stronger in a short period of time. There are a number of conditions that make the time chamber a perfect place to gain strength quickly. For starters, the flow of time within the chamber is compressed. One day of real time is equivalent to one year inside the chamber, or one minute of real time is approximately 6 hours, 5 minutes, and 15 seconds in the chamber. The gravity in the living area of the hyperbolic time chamber is described as being different, although it does not appear to be much greater than the Earth's gravity of 1g. Alternatively, the gravity of the training area outside the living area is 10g. Gohan's first step over the threshold of the training area brought him to his knees. This doesn't happen in the Dragon Ball manga which explains how gravity can seem different in the living area. Trunks also had some difficulty with gravity, but Goku and Vaidira were well accustomed to much higher levels of gravity by the time they used the chamber. The temperature in the training area fluctuates rapidly, ranging from minus 40 degrees Celsius minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 50 degrees Celsius 122 degrees Fahrenheit. The air pressure is a quarter of that on Earth, in the anime, the air is said to get thinner the deeper it goes into the chamber. Goku explains to Gohan during his visit to the chamber that the air gets thinner and thinner in the recesses beyond the square, which can be threatening since the hyperbolic time chamber has no apparent boundaries. The abnormal and inconsistent air pressure makes breathing difficult. The seemingly endless white void can have a potentially maddening effect on a person's mind. The time dilation combined with the hostile environment essentially allows someone entering the hyperbolic time chamber to get a year's worth of intense training in a single day. Goku has stated that even simply doing nothing in the chamber chamber still takes a huge toll on the body. The only major drawback is that a person's aging process will correspond to the compressed time stream inside the chamber, rather than real-world time. This means that when someone leaves the time chamber after a whole year of training, he will be a year older and will have lost a whole year of his life in just a single day. Chamber can only be used for two days, or two years, by anyone, which means that a person can only enter the chamber twice in his life, assuming he stays the whole year both times. Staying in the chamber for two days in a row counts as two uses. If anyone tries to use the chamber beyond the 48-hour limit, 
they will not be allowed to leave, leaving them stuck in nothingness and not allowing anyone else to use the outer door. Also, there are only enough provisions to accommodate two people for an entire year. This is commonly misinterpreted as a general limit of two people, but it should be noted that in the Bu Saga four people in total were inside the chamber. The door to the room is eventually destroyed, rendering it useless and temporarily trapping several characters inside. The time chamber has now been rebuilt by Dend, but with a number of improvements, dubbed the second hyperbolic time chamber. Limit of two times a person can enter the time chamber has been removed, as Vedira has used the time chamber a total of five times. Twice in preparation for fighting Cell, once with Goku to train for the tournament against Universe 6, once to train for the fight against future Goku Black and Zamasu, and once to train for the tournament of power. In addition, this new chamber can be used for at least three days, or three years, in a row. The new room also apparently doesn't have the old chamber's weakness of having a destructible door, as Goku states, no matter how far we take things here, we don't have to worry about destroying anything. This means that people training inside the chamber can leave without having to worry about destroying their only exit. However, the rebuilt time chamber is also shown to be capable of being destroyed if you train hard enough, as Vedira ends up destroying it twice in the anime. After Vedira destroyed it after his training to face Goku Black and Zamasu from the future, Mr. Popo created a rule that Vedira would be banned from using the hyperbolic time chamber if it was destroyed again, when he was allowed to use the chamber after it was rebuilt again just before the tournament of power. Humorously, Vedira ended up destroying it despite the warning. But after all, if Goku trained for two years in the chamber, could he defeat Beerus? Well, according to calculations, two years inside the chamber equals two days in the real world. That said, it would be enough time for him to get stronger. That is if he was training for something very specific, like a new power or transformation. Beerus is easily capable of destroying planets, he once hit his nail and half the planet was completely obliterated. He also destroyed a planet completely by letting a tiny bit of energy fall from his finger onto its surface. It is stated by Supreme Kais that Beerus has enough power to destroy the entire universe if he was provoked enough, and it is later implied that at full strength, Beerus would destroy the entire universe. It is also stated by King Kai that Beerus is on a level far beyond strong. Beerus also has immense speed, able to go from his temple to another planet located in another star system or galaxy in less than two minutes, making him able to traverse great distances in space. According to Old Kai, however, Beerus was not as strong or evil as Majin Buu at the time the latter sealed him. Apparently this god of destruction can simply sneeze and blow up planets. Single swallow of wasabi is enough to blow up several planets, that's it. Powerful and feared as Beerus has become in his eras as a deity, his power is not truly supreme, as he openly states that Wiss, his martial arts teacher, is superior in power. Beerus' power also pales in comparison to Zeno, the supreme deity who rules all universes and gods. Ironically, Beerus fears upsetting Zeno in a similar way to how others fear Beerus himself. Beerus is also afraid of the Grand Priest, as shown when he immediately knelt before his presence and shuddered in fear when the Grand Priest looked at him in an angry manner. Beerus' greatest vulnerability is the Supreme Kais of Universe 7. All the active Supreme Kais died, then Beerus would also die due to him. He therefore tries to ensure that no harm comes to Shin, the only active Supreme KO of his universe, in any way possible as part of his duties. That said, in order for Goku to surpass him in two years, or two days in the real world, he would need not only time to get stronger, but also an absurd dedication to a new kind of training. Considering the pace of things, it would be interesting to see was playing the role of master now, because once Vedira is closer to a god of destruction in his new transformations and abilities, Goku would be expected to be the counterpoint to that and become an angel, or gain a form that would allow him to become as powerful as Wiss. That way, he would not only gain new powers, but also come out of it with a power far superior to Beerus and also, perhaps, surpassing even Wiss' own capabilities. That's pretty much his face, isn't it? But what about you? Would you like to see Goku surpassing Beerus in the future? Leave your opinion in the comments. That's it. I really hope you enjoyed the video, if you have any suggestions for videos don't forget to comment here below because I'll be reading all of them as I always do. Also don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any content from your universe Z.